Barba.js is a simple, small JavaScript library that lets you create smooth page transitions between static pages. And even on the demo of Barba, of the introduction of the features, you can see it in action. Anytime you click on a link, you animate the elements on the page away in a way that you choose to. And also the page that is coming in can be then animated in. Okay, so most of the fancy examples that we have seen at the end of last video and here are using JavaScript animations, but we will start simple from CSS animations just to get to know Barba. We want the container to fade in on the initial page load and for that we will use Barba and the CSS transition. If we look at the package JSON, you'll see that we've already installed Barba Core and Barba CSS. So Barba Core is used for everything and JavaScript animations with it. And if you want to use the CSS animations, then you need to load in special plugin Barba CSS. That's what we will start with. Okay, the installation of Barba is in the documentation. NPM install Barba Core, which we've already done. And the plugin, the CSS plugin, is in the plugin section under CSS. Okay, that will add and remove classes from our container. And then we can write CSS to actually make the transitions. So we've already installed it. All we have to do is just to import it in our demo. Okay, we can actually use all lines from here and go back to our app.js. Firstly, we importing both Barba Core and the Barba CSS plugin. Then we are telling Barba to use the CSS plugin. And then we are initiating the Barba itself. The other thing we need to tell Barba is to mark some of the HTML as a wrapper and some of it needs to be a container. Okay, so wrapper is usually on the body or on something quite high in the DOM hierarchy and the Data Barba container is usually on a main or header or any element inside of the wrapper. So that's the only requirement. Wrapper should be always around the container and any content between the wrapper and container will stay the same between pages. And the container itself will be swapped with the container from the next page. Okay, so both the current page and the next page, they need to have container and these containers will be replaced by Barba. Okay, so when we click on the link, Barba makes the request to get the container from the next page and injects it to the current page, changes the URL. So it will look like a single page application, even though it's just two pages linked by normal href. Alrighty, so let's do it first. Set the body to be the, the data Barba wrapper. and container will be on our header. That's the element we want to change between the two pages. And we'll do it as well on the second page, which is the fate. Container and wrapper. Okay, so that's the markup required for Barba to work. And we will simply, when we click on the fade link, this header will be replaced by the header from the fade HTML. And if we had some content between the wrapper and container, it would stay the same. Alrighty. The next thing we need to define for Barba is the config and that will take transitions. Transitions will be an array of objects and inside of it, we can define the first one which would be just once. Okay, so once would be a simple function. And if we define this, then Barba with the CSS plugin will generate some classes for us that we can then write in the style sheet and see it happening in the browser. Okay, so we need to write the empty function, empty method, empty hook, Barba calls it a hook, and once it's called once because it happens once on the page load and then will never happen again. Alrighty, so let's see that if we go to a browser, we won't see much happening. 
Let's open the DevTools and see if we have some classes applied to the header. If I refresh, we don't see any animation because we haven't defined any and also the class disappears way too fast. So I've just stopped the video so we can see the Barba ones active and Barba ones two classes being applied. And if we look at this slide, we can see that at the start of each transition, Barba generates the classes Barba ones and Barba ones active. That's the starting state. And then it animates to Barba ones two. Okay, so the Barba ones is the starting class. That's where we will define our opacity zero. The ending state is Barba ones two, where we will define the opacity one. And the Barba ones active is the actual transition, the CSS transition that will animate our element from the initial value to the ending one. Alrighty, so that's how the classes are applied. And I know it's a little bit harder. That's why I had to stop the video just to show you how the classes are applied. And once the CSS transition is finished, the classes are removed from the header. That's why without any CSS transition, this happens instantly and you can't really see the classes being applied. So let's write the CSS. Let's go to the style sheet inside of the app.scss. We actually we will want to go to the home, home as CSS. That's where we will write the animation and we will type in the dot bar by once. That will be our starting state. Then the next class is dot bar by once active. That will have the transition. And then we'll define the Barba ones two. That's the ending state. Okay, we want to animate from opacity zero to opacity one. And the transition, we will want to animate these opacities from zero to one over the duration of one second and linear. Okay. Now let's have a look at it in a browser. We should see the container fading in. Refresh the page, here it is. It's fading in over the duration of one second. Then the classes are removed from the header. And let's change the duration to three seconds and give it a little delay so it doesn't happen straight away on page load, but slightly after and takes a little bit longer. Okay, so we're just faking it the duration a little bit longer. We can see the classes being applied for the whole duration of the transition. So how long the classes stay on the element depends on the transition duration. And by default, the Barba generates the classes with the Barba name in front of it. So the first Barba could be overwritten. If we define a name for our transition, set it to home, then Barba would generate home classes. So home ones, home ones active and home ones two are based on the name of the transition. So that's how, that's how you can customize the name of it. And here you see the home classes in the browser. Now let's go back to the JavaScript and we'll create two more hooks. The once has also before once and after once hooks that you can write your own code inside of them and this will run before the ones or after it. So these are another two hooks associated with the once transition. And let's put some console logs inside of them so we know which ones are triggered when. First one console log before ones and also for the after ones. These two console logs will happen before and after the transition. And let's put a console log also in the once transition itself because it's very important to know, know and understand that when you using CSS plugin, the once callback or method will not run. And here it is in the browser. Okay, so before the transition started, we have the before once console log. Then we have the after once, but the once console log never runs. So when you're using CSS transitions or CSS plugin, the once a hook is only used for the CSS transition itself and then listens to the transition end. 
but none of the code inside of the ones method would be running. So just keep that in mind and use the before ones and after ones method instead. Now let's recap what we've done in this video. Firstly, we did import Barba and the Barba CSS plugin. We told Barba to use the CSS plugin and we've defined our once transition. So on a, on a first page load, we want the container to animate in. We've defined the first transition and that generates CSS classes, home ones, home ones active and home ones too with the starting point, ending point and the transition itself. Let's change this to one second. And in the index HTML and fade HTML, we had to wrap everything in the data barba wrapper and the header in data barba container. Okay, so now we are generating multiple classes, removing them at the right time from the containers. That's how we're using the once hook or once transition that happens on the first page load. Because we haven't specified any rules, this would happen on any page. Okay, so if I go back to the browser and go to the fade HTML and refresh, this page also fades in. Okay, so we'll touch on conditions and rules a little bit later, but because we haven't defined any rules, this applies to any page that renders this JavaScript file.